What's up, guys? Celtics win. That's not the score. 92-68. Say what? Oh, Celtics win. 92-88. What a game. Uh, so a real slow start, and the Warriors went way ahead. They were up 17, and uh, Celtics couldn't hit anything for a long time. And then, um, you know, they hung around for a while, hung around for a while. Defense picked up a little bit. Then Kyrie Irving went to the bench, if you remember, with like uh, four minutes left, five minutes left in the third quarter. And immediately, Jalen Brown, uh, one of the big keys was, remember, he uh, forced Kevin Durant into the uh, backcourt violation. You remember that? And then Jalen Brown comes back through the legs, step back over maybe Livingston. And then Jalen Brown comes right back and drills a three three pointer golden state warriors call a timeout because it's a 10 point game and then right after the timeout jalen brown hits another three pointer to make it a seven point game then uh, i think al horford had a dunk maybe to make it a five point game and then there was just a lot of free throws but jalen brown i think really turned that game around uh when the team was down you know 13 15 points Kyrie Irving was going to the bench. Jalen Brown, of all people, steps up. Just like he stepped up in the playoffs last year, showed that he was not afraid of LeBron James. And even going back to the second game of the season last year, as a rookie, put up 18 points against LeBron James, was not afraid whatsoever. So this guy has what it takes to shine on the biggest stages of all. And uh, this is going to be such a big confidence booster because we're going to need him to bring this exact mentality into the playoffs as a young team going against the Cavaliers, going against the Wizards, going against the uh, Raptors, whoever it is, and then potentially going against the Warriors. If we're actually going to give the Warriors a run for their money in the playoffs, we're going to need these young guys like Jalen Brown, like Jason Tatum, who hit two clutch free throws to put us up four points, make it a two-possession game with seven seconds left. We're going to need these guys to play like grown men, and we saw it tonight. They're doing it. So, so far I had a schedule that's ridiculous. And, um, but, you know, Tatum with a real slow start, he just, uh, his defense, he was lost. He was just kind of lost in the moment, I think. And maybe a couple other guys, but Jason Tatum especially, just lost in the moment, lost defensively. But he got to the line nine times, hit eight of them in the clutch. Kyrie Irving hit about six free throws in the fourth quarter. Almost all of them were either like game tying or go ahead free throws. It was like the ultimate pressure situation, and he just they just drilled them all. All of these guys did, and Jalen Brown, his uh, three point percentage rising even higher, his points per game rising even higher, and in a performance like this, guys, this is how you start getting that uh, all star consideration. It's performances like this, all star performances like this. So as long as he keeps his averages up, he's got to go a little bit higher than he is now. But uh, Jalen Brown is going to be right there. And Al Horford and Kyrie Irving are pretty much locks for All-Stars at, at this point. Um, ESPN Real Plus Minus just came out. Al Horford far and away the top power forward in the NBA by these you know, Real Plus Minus standards, whatever they mean. ESPN doesn't tell us what goes into that formula, so don't want to read too much into that. But obviously, Al Horford having a tre tremendous year. And uh, Kyrie Irving, very poor start with the mask on. He goes to the bench, comes back without the mask on, and got to the free throw line, knocked him down. And our bench really won the game. Um, Marcus Smart, plus 15, which is shocking because, uh, you know, he couldn't hit anything whatsoever. And not only was he not hitting shots, but he even tipped Kyrie Irving's made basket out of the hoop. So it's amazing we won this game with mistakes like that being made. And it's amazing we won this game shooting 33%, 22% from the uh, three-point line. But look at that, 80, 87%, 33 made free throws. That's the story of the game right there. And uh, holding holding the Warriors to 40%, 31% from three, 63% from the free throw line. So this was not the Warriors' best effort. Most games, they're going to hit more than this, even if the defense is locked down. Especially free throws, those are gimme, so defense doesn't even apply, right? So Celtics guard an atmosphere, that's a indication that 
uh, Celtics atmosphere, garden atmosphere was a factor. But uh, anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of the game. Terry Rozier played pretty solid. And it was just, it was defensive domination in that third quarter. As soon as Kyrie Irving went out with like four minutes left in the third quarter, it was absolute defensive domination led by these two stud young guards who still can't make a shot, but their defense is so locked down. And Jalen Brown is so locked down, looking like the best wing defender in the NBA. And Smart and Rozier, the two, two of the best um, perimeter defenders in the NBA. So between those three, it's just an unbelievable trio of defenders. And it's good to know that, you know, if Kyrie Irving isn't hitting a shot and he's just not making an impact, that we can go to these guys and there's a, at least a 50-50 chance that they can come through and provide a positive impact and uh, squeeze the Celtics through some very tough situations. Guys, let me know what you think. Celtics have the best record in the league, undisputed top 10, top team in the league, undisputed now. We just beat the Warriors. You want to say the Warriors are better? How are they better when the Celtics just beat them? So they're going to have to prove it again and uh, or at least start getting a better record than Celtics. Guys, I will see you soon. Peace.